Something I saw pop up on Twitter, uh, I think it was yesterday, that stood out to me as something I struggled with early on while I was learning all this coding stuff is um, when and whether or not you should be using comments in your code. Um, and the thing that, that took me a long time to understand was what it meant by um, good code documents itself. Because on the surface, that sounds like something that's honestly kind of arrogant and obnoxious. It's like, well, good code documents itself. But there's this huge kind of black hole in the form of, well, what does good code mean? So what I wanted to do is show you how I avoid writing comments. So don't take this necessarily as what the definition of good code is. Um, I personally think it is, and I, I can explain that. So I think what I'm about to show you is good code because it's organized in such a way that I can always come back to it several months down the road. And even if I haven't seen it at all, I can read through it and get an immediate understanding for what it's doing. And there's a keyword there, so the keyword is what. So if we're looking at this code right here, this is a module that I'm writing um, for a SAS product I'm working on called Command that's going to be available to the public here in, a, in about a month or two. And the thing that I'm doing right now is I'm working through the add card module. So cards are this concept where uh, you can document some piece of work that you need to work on in the form of a card. So inside of this module, I have a few different tasks that I complete. Um, to complete the action of creating a card or adding a card to the database. So as part of that, you can see that what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, I need to figure out what the current card count for the product is. I need to actually create the card in the database. Um, I need to log some activity on that card to say like, hey, something happened here. Um, and I need to index the card on Algolia, which is the search service that I'm using in the app. And so all of this code, if we look at it, it's not really difficult to understand what it's doing. So if we look, like the, the, the naming conventions that I use and the structure of the code, so this is something that I call the action pattern, which um, if you look here on the YouTube channel or you just uh, go to the, the blog over at cleverbeagle.com, I've written about this a few times, but the, the action pattern allows me to structure my code in such a way to say, okay, there's an action of adding a card to the database. And so, as part of that action, there are multiple steps. So what I'm doing by creating this action code or following this action pattern is what I call it. What I'm allowing myself to do is say, okay, well, you're adding a card, but what are the steps involved in that? And more importantly, what sequence do those steps occur in? And so that's what I've done here. I've given each of the steps a very clear name, and then I call them in sequence. And so what this is allowing me to do, or more importantly, my brain to do, is understand not just what's happening in the code, like at the, the base level, but it's helping me to understand, okay, what does it mean to add a card to the database? So that's, that's part one. So the reason I don't have a lot of comments in here is because I just don't need them. The code is written in a way that it clearly tells me what's happening, or in the more obnoxious sense, it documents itself, or it's self-documenting. Um, but that doesn't mean that comments aren't necessary. And this is kind of the thing that prompted me to do this video. So this is all well and good, but when I flip over to my tests, there's something that's going on. So this is, you'll notice this is called addcard.testjs. So this is my integration test for the add card action. And something came up earlier that, that honestly stumped me, um, which was I was testing this code and the thing that was wrong was um, I noticed I had a bug. So when I was inserting a new comment, so when you're adding a card to the, to the database, you can optionally add a comment at the same exact time that you add that card. And what I noticed was the date wasn't being applied. So in my UI, it was showing up as invalid date, which immediately told me, oh, I'm not inserting that correctly in the database. So what I had to do was come in here and I added uh, this created at timestamp to what I'm expecting comments.insert to insert when this code functions properly. So if we come back in here so we can see, where is it? Here it is. So I say, if there's a comment passed from the client, go ahead and insert the comment. And then this function up here, insert comment, is responsible for inserting the comment. And there's where that naming comes in. So what this is doing is it's saying, okay, into the comments collection, and I'm using MongoDB here. So I'm saying in the comments collection, I want to insert this object. And before, I was missing this. 
So basically I was inserting comments, but they weren't getting the created at timestamp. So what I did is I came in and said, oh, okay, that's what I need to change. So I updated that and added it, but then I noticed my test started to fail. And it took me a second to wrap my head around why, but I was able to quickly understand because the, the thing that stood out was this chunk of code right here, if I move it, pretty sure I had it down here. So I was only doing this code or running this code for one test. And what this code is doing is it's saying in the context, let me make sure I don't break my <laughs> test here. I just broke my test. Oh no, I didn't, it's still there. So what I was doing is I was saying, okay, as part of adding a card, I need to get whatever the current date and time are, which is perfectly fine, but in the context of a test, that test is running automatically. So we wanna think like, at this point, I don't have control, it's the computer that has control. And so every time I ran my test, the date was changing. And I didn't want that because the date inside of a test is irrelevant. I wanna make sure that the date was set, but I don't really care what the value of that date is. Meaning I don't care what the exact date is. I just care that that code was called and it actually ran through. And so what I had to do was get around the problem where I would run my code and the, the date uh, let me show you because it makes a little more sense if you can see it. So this code was running, so date two ISO string. So it was running and it was doing exactly what I told it to, but because it was running in the context of the test, it was the date was changing very subtly. So it was changing by like milliseconds. Like instead of 0.238, I was getting 0.239. And so running stuff like this down here, the created at timestamp that I was expecting comments dot insert to be called with was out of sync with what it was actually getting um, internally in the module. So what I had to do was say, okay, I need to override uh, the global date constructor inside of my test. So that way, when my tests run, I can force it to return this specific timestamp. And you can see the last time I really played with this was January 19th. So that I just spit out a timestamp and said, okay, this is my test value. So that was all working well and good but something that I added recently was the indexing of all new cards on Algolia. Again, that's the search service that I'm using. So that worked all well and good, but way deep down in the code of that package, something I couldn't see, and unless I go and really dig through the source of the package, I, I wouldn't see, is I was getting an error when I ran my test, and it said, um, cannot read property get time of undefined or something along those lines. And so, it took me a second to wrap my head around it, but the thing that helped me was how I use comments. So what I was doing here, I just told myself why. So I'm writing this global.date just function, but I said, why am I using it in my note? Now, this is just my own convention. I just say note colon, and then I tell myself what's going on. So here this is saying mock global date constructor so all dates match and test. And that comment it's not verbose, but it told me immediately like, well, why are you doing this? And if I get rid of that, and I get rid of this one just for good measure, the first question that comes to mind is, what, why the hell are you doing that? And unless you really spend some cycles thinking about it, you're not gonna know. So this is the type of code that doesn't document itself. Um, but if I run into this situation, all I have to do is just add a comment. So this is when comments are best applied is it's, not what is happening, but why is that happening? And so in this case, we can see, okay, I tell myself this is what I'm doing. And then this, what I did immediately after figuring this out was, oh, okay, because I'm overriding the global date constructor inside of my test, that means the Algolia package, which was dependent on the global date constructor, couldn't get access to a function that it needed. So I need to make sure to mock that too. And that's just kind of an edge case. That's gonna happen when you're writing uh, tests like this. So what I did was I didn't just add that, but I also told myself. So I'm not just saying mock the global date constructor, but now it may not be immediately obvious why I need to get time. And the reason why is that there's no code inside of this file or inside of my test that relies on get time. So it's kind of arbitrary. So if I didn't tell myself why it's there, it'd be like, uh, what's that about? Um, but that's where a comment comes in. So I can tell myself, oh, this is because the Algolia search package requires get time to exist and blah, 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 blah. But now if I come back, I, I call it my six month test. So if I come back in six months, 
all I need to ask myself is, am I going to understand this? Even if it's a rough understanding, am I going to understand this? And the answer is yes, because this is telling me why. And then the rest of my code is telling me what just by how it's named and how it's organized. Um, so hopefully that was helpful because I wish somebody would have told me this years and years ago when they kept saying like, well, oh, your, your code self-documents. It should self-document. That's total bullshit if you don't have context like this. So um, hopefully that was helpful. And hopefully now that gives you a little more of a, a, a concept of how to write your code in such a way so that you don't have to utilize comments as much.